Hi everyone! In today's video, we're going to talk about the current 15 meta heroes of Honor of Kings. Whether you're a veteran player or just starting out, it's always good to know which heroes are strong in the current meta. The meta is always shifting with new updates and balance changes, so some heroes rise to the top while others fall out. But these 15 heroes are really popular in higher ranks and tournaments. We'll go over what makes each of these heroes so good, their strengths and abilities, and why they're considered top picks right now. Knowing this info can help you prioritize who to play, or even just understand how to play against them better. It's a pretty diverse list with damage dealers, tanks, supports, you name it. So there should be something for everyone. Alright, now let's jump into number 15. At number 15 we have Dong Huang. Currently he has the second highest ban rate in the game. Dong Huang is one of the scariest tanks to face against in ranked. You can play him aggressively from the start. The suppression lock of his ultimate is his main strength. If Dong Huang locks a target with his ultimate, then it is impossible to escape, which makes him very effective against high mobility assassins. Dong Huang's suppression and crowd control abilities allows him to control the flow of teamfights. You should always use your ultimate at full or 50% health, because Dong Huang will receive equal damage as the locked target. That's the reason you should build high HP items on him. Always check your teammates' positions before using the ultimate. If there's no damage output from the team, then it will be a waste of his ultimate. Overall, a very strong tank in this meta. Here is Dong Huang's top build and Arcana. At number 14, we have Mozi. Mozi isn't as impactful as a pure mid lane mage in this meta, but his roaming capabilities are very effective. So we'll be talking about him as a support. One of the main strengths of Mozi is his crowd control abilities. He can constantly poke enemies with his second skill. It can stun the target for one second and it's very annoying to deal with. It's a long range skill, so you can poke enemies from a distance. His passive and ultimate skill also work as crowd control skills. You can take advantage of those skills at close range teamfights. Mozi's roaming capabilities also allow him to provide vision control and exert map pressure, making him a valuable asset in coordinated team compositions. If you're looking for a support with long-range poking abilities and crowd control, then Mozi is a great choice. Although he's a roamer, you need to build magic items to fully utilize Mozi's skill damage. You can also buy one or two defense items depending on the situation. Here's his build in Arcana. At number 13, we have Marco Polo. He is one of the few marksmen who can deal true damage to targets. True damage ignores shields and all kinds of defenses, making it very hard to deal with. He can constantly poke enemies in a line with his first skill. Also, with the help of his ultimate, he can deal massive AoE damage to grouped up enemies. You need to trigger Marco Polo's passive first to maximize his skill damage. Marco Polo needs to get close to the enemy to utilize his ultimate effectively so wait for the right opportunity to use it. Overall, Marco Polo is a strong hero against tanky heroes, and he can deal massive AoE damage. He remains very consistent with his performance, making him a very good pick in this meta. Here's the top build in Arcana for Marco Polo. At number 12, we have Zhang Fei. He is currently one of the most picked roamers in tournaments and higher ranks, he can constantly provide shield to his teammates with his second skill, granting extra survivability to your team. Also because of his tankiness, he can easily soak up a lot of damage. His ultimate can knock back the entire enemy team if used correctly. When he uses his ultimate, he gains extra health and shield. You can easily tower dive and initiate teamfights with this skill. So you need to play aggressively and initiate teamfights when you pick Zhang Fei as his kit excels in those situations. He is a very strong frontline tank in this meta, and he can also provide shields with his second skill. If you want to play an aggressive tank with tons of survivability, then you should pick Zhang Fei. Here's his top build in Arcana. At number 11, we have Fang. Fang is a versatile marksman who can also be played as a jungler. He is a strong marksman with burst damage abilities, his abilities allow him to deal high burst damage to the enemies. Surprisingly, he's the only marksman hero in this game who can be effective as a jungler. With his low cooldown skills he can clear jungle monsters very fast. His main key strength is his second skill, 
He can dash and deal continuous damage with this skill. Also, he becomes untargetable when using the dash. It saves him from lots of dangerous situations. Second skill can be used flexibly for offense and defense. It's a very crucial skill for Fang, so you need to use it very carefully according to the situation. Overall, a very strong hero. If you want to try a different type of jungler, then I highly recommend you to play Fang. Here's his top build, an Arcana. At number 10, we have Diao Chan. She is currently one of the most popular mages with a high pick and win rate. She is a close range mage capable of dealing continuous and true damage to enemies. Her ability to deal true damage makes her very effective at countering tanky heroes. Her gameplay revolves around her second skill, which makes her untargetable for a short time. Combined with her ultimate, she can constantly spam her second skill and deal tons of damage. She is one of those heroes that you shouldn't fight in a 1v1 situation. She can easily dodge any projectile with her second skill, if used correctly. You need to farm well at the early game to be more effective at mid to late game. She needs cooldown items to take full advantage of her skills. Also, Diao Chan is weak against hard crowd control skills and long stuns. You need to be very careful against suppression heroes like Liang or Dong Huang. Those heroes can shut her down very easily. Try to master her second skill timing perfectly, then you can become very deadly. Overall a very strong mage, and if you're a mage main, then you should give her a try. Here's her top build in Arcana. At number 9 we have Dolia. Currently she has the highest pick rate among all support heroes. She has been very popular since her release. Because of her supporting mechanics, she is considered very powerful in tournaments. The main reason for her strength is her ultimate skill. She can reset the cooldown of any allied hero's skills. So combining her with heroes like Lubu, Kaiser, Marco Polo, or any other heroes with strong ultimates can become very dangerous. Dolia heavily depends on her team composition. Your team needs to pick heroes with strong ultimates to take advantage of her skill. Playing Dolia effectively requires excellent teamwork and coordination with your teammates as her abilities heavily rely on synergy with her team's composition. Her ultimate takes a lot of time to refresh, so you need to be careful on which teammate you should use your skill. Also, she can heal teammates with her second skill, so try to use that skill on low health allies. Overall, Dalia is a very strong support if you pair her with a compatible hero. Here's her top build in Arcana. At number 8 we have Mayane. She is a fighter with lots of mobility and crowd control. One of her main strengths is her combos. She can perform multiple combos to deal damage and control enemies. She is a bit difficult to master because you need to execute combos perfectly according to the situation. Her kit allows her to effectively handle and disrupt multiple enemies simultaneously, making her very scary in team fights. She can easily escape or chase enemies with her multiple dash skills. Dodging enemies' crowd control skills is very easy for Mayan. She can dodge any kind of CC skills with her second skill, except for suppression. Her ultimate skill adds an extra layer of strength to her combos. You can perform one extra combo when the ultimate is active. She can easily take down any mage or marksman very easily. Overall, Main is a very aggressive and strong fighter. With a little bit of practice, you can easily dominate with her. Here's her top build and Arcana. At number 7, we have another popular fighter, Charlotte. Charlotte's main strength is her passive. She relies heavily on her skills. Her low cooldown skills allow her to constantly trigger her passive by using her abilities. It enhances all of her skills, making them more powerful. You need to hit enemies or other targets to maintain her passive. She can poke enemies using her first skill and heal using her second skill. So you need to accurately hit targets to activate her passive. You can repeat this process to lower enemies' health. She can stack her passive multiple times, so try to hit enemies accurately. Charlotte excels at dealing sustained damage over time, as her passive and low cooldown skills enable her to continuously apply pressure on enemies. Charlotte is all about maintaining her passive and repeatedly spamming skills over and over. She is a very strong pick in the current meta. Overall, a solid fighter with strong abilities. Here's her top build and Arcana. Yes. 
At number 6 we have Princess Frost. She's currently the highest priority and most picked mage in tournaments and higher ranks. Her overall skill makes her very scary in team fights. One of her main strong point is her crowd control abilities. She can slow enemies with her first skill and freeze enemies with her second. Freeze duration lasts up to 2.5 seconds, which is a very long time for a single crowd control ability. So it's pretty much over for enemies if they get caught with this skill. Also, her ultimate deals continuous magic damage in a large area. It can easily disrupt enemies' formation. Her ultimate skill can be used as both an offensive and defensive tool. You can easily clear minions with her ultimate, making it difficult for enemies to push towers. Also, her ultimate can zone out enemies when your teammates are pushing. You can use it flexibly according to the situation. One of her main weaknesses is mobility. She doesn't have any dash skill, so you need to maintain a good position at all time. The combination of her crowd control abilities, sustained damage, and zoning potential make Princess Frost very effective when her skills are utilized effectively. Overall, Princess Frost is one of the best mages in this current meta. Here's the top build and arcana of Princess Frost. Finally, we're in top 5 of the list. At number 5, we have Jing. She is an assassin specialized in dealing high burst damage to enemies. She can take down any squishy target instantly. Her overall skills make her a perfect assassin for taking down core targets. Her ultimate skill can deal continuous damage back and forth. With her perfect execution of her ultimate, she can become very deadly in her mirrored vortex. It's very hard for enemies to predict her next move when she uses her ultimate. Jing's kit also provides her with excellent mobility, allowing her to reposition quickly and catch her targets off guard. She is a rather difficult hero to master, so her overall strength depends on the user's skill proficiency. The more you practice, the better you can play her effectively. She is very strong when the user knows how to use her skills perfectly. Overall, Jing is a high skill based assassin, good for players who are looking for a difficult hero to master. Here's her top build and arcana. At number 4, we have Mulan. Mulan is a very popular fighter assassin with a dual role playstyle. Her skill set perfectly combines elements of both fighter and assassin roles. You can use her ultimate to switch between forms. She is very mobile on her dual sword mode. You can dash with her first skill and silence enemies with her passive. She gains crowd control immunity when she switches her blade. Mulan becomes bulkier when she's on her heavy sword form. She can deal heavy burst damage with her first skill charge. Her second skill can be used to knock back enemies while dealing damage. Both of her skills grant crowd control immunity to Mulan. So, it becomes extremely difficult to control her when she charges her skills. You can combine both of her sword forms to take down core enemy targets. Mulan's ability to seamlessly transition between her two forms allows her to adapt her playstyle dynamically, making her a versatile threat in various situations. You need a high level of skill proficiency to master her skills. Overall, Mulan is one of the strongest side laners in this game. If you want a fighter with high carry potential, then Mulan is the hero you need to master. Here's her top build in Arcana. At number 3, we have Arlie. Arlie is a marksman with lots of mobility. All of her skills are dash abilities, which make her a very agile marksman. She can deal very high damage with basic attacks and her passive. Because of her high mobility skills, it becomes very difficult for enemies to predict her next move. She can easily kite enemy heroes with her skills. Combining her skills and passive, she can take down targets very fast. Also, her second skill can block enemy projectiles if used correctly. With her ability to constantly reposition and kite enemies, Arlie can deal sustained damage over time, making her a threat in team fights. Arlie needs to play very aggressively because of her skills. Her basic attack range is shorter than a regular marksman, so she needs to confront enemies directly to deal damage. You have to maintain proper positioning and understand her skills better to maximize damage output. She's a difficult hero to master, so there's a high chance of making mistakes if you're not careful enough. Overall, Arlie is one of the best marksmen that you can play in this meta, and she can dominate easily if used correctly. Here's her top build and arcana. At number 2, we have Pei. At first, most players think Pei is not that good because of his low popularity. But in reality, 
he is one of the most powerful junglers in the current meta. Many experienced Chinese players dominate with this hero at higher ranks. One of Pei's main strength is his early game invade potential. He can invade the enemy's jungle from the beginning. If the enemy team isn't careful enough, Pei can take advantage and gain an early lead. Also, because of his dual form playstyle, he can engage in ranged or melee combat. Pei's versatility and ability to switch between ranged and melee combat allows him to adapt his playstyle dynamically, making him a threat in various situations. Thanks to his second skill in tiger form, he can rotate very fast. He can also take advantage of terrains to rotate faster. You can switch between his forms to take full advantage of his diverse skill set. Pei is a high mechanical hero with huge potential. You need to farm properly to maximize his damage output. Overall, Pei is the hero you should master in the current meta. With proper utilization of his skill mechanics, he can carry the game very easily. Here's his top build in Arcana. Before we continue to number 1, I would like to give honorable mentions to the following heroes. First is Haino, a versatile mage with poke damage and sustain capabilities. He can constantly poke enemies with his first skill and survive from dangerous situations with his ultimate. Also, he can be played in the clash lane as well. He is very sustainable with a tank build. He is currently unavailable in new servers, so he couldn't make it onto the top 15. Sunsa is another fighter currently unavailable in new servers. He is also one of the strong fighters often used at higher ranks. He can deal high damage and sustain longer in team fights. He can easily take down enemies off guard with his ultimate skill. Lastly, I'd like to give an honorable mention to Durenji. He is also one of the best marksmen in the current meta. He's very effective against enemy front lines and tanks. Because he lacks mobility, I couldn't put him on the list. But still, he is a very capable marksman, and you shouldn't underestimate him. Now. Let's continue to number one. And finally, at number one, we have Lamb. It should come as no surprise that Lamb secures the number one spot on this list. He is currently the top banned hero in the current meta. Throughout all the balance adjustments, Lamb consistently stayed at the top every time. One of the main reasons for Lamb's key strength is his viable tank build. Lamb with a tank build still remains incredibly strong and dominates in ranked games. Because of his high sustain and damage, Tank Lamb is still very popular. He can easily take advantage of the items and become very powerful. Even though they nerfed his sustain in the recent patch, it didn't affect his gameplay that much. Lamb can easily take down multiple enemies without any problems. It's very hard to deal against him with such high damage and sustain. Overall, Lamb is an overpowered hero in this meta and you shouldn't miss the chance to abuse him in ranked if you get the opportunity. Here's his top build in Arcana. And there you have it, the top 15 meta heroes of the game right now. Keep in mind that meta always change with hero adjustments within every update. Some heroes might fall off while others become powerful. However, the heroes on this list are likely to remain relevant for the most part. Share your thoughts on these heroes, and if you agree with the rankings, then let me know in the comments section below. I would appreciate if you leave a like and subscribe to this channel. It will help me to create more content like this in the future. So that's it for today's video, and as always, thank you for watching.